but thanks to him, I, I don't think I need to say anything. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> but this has been a great privilege. Um, uh, the past, of course, it seemed like forever being able to be inducted into the Hall of Fame. There was a journey. I just didn't walk into this um, the last year. They just didn't call me. But there was a reason why I was selected to be inducted into the uh, Pro Football Hall of Fame. My journey started back in Jacksonville, Florida. I, was, I grew up around a lot of great guys. Something that I hope is going on here is surrounding, I know Jim has done this, surrounding yourself with good people. And I had, what, just about 11 of us that grew up together. Nine of us, uh, five of us stayed right next door to each other. Our team was called the Baby Robins, the softball team. If you go back to Jacksonville, and talk to some of the people in Jacksonville about the baby Robins, they, we, they're still talking about us. We were good. <laughs> we were good. I played third base, and um, most people thought I should have pitched or either played first base, but third base was that, that hot spot where most people hit that ball down, and it calls it the hot spot. Normally, the, the bag, the third base bag is right here. I played like right here. I played in front of them. Uh, nobody else could play that like that because most people played even with the bag or behind the bag. But these were so good. <laughs> <laughs> and I see you, I, I boast about them because I've been blessed. Um, and I had a glove about that big too, so I had to go with it. But, you know, we played together. Uh, that's where I started my competitiveness with the Robin. You know, I looked around at uh, home plate, first base, second base, shortstop, the pitchers, right field, left field, center field. And I looked at these guys and I said, I cannot let these guys down. I got to be my best at all times. And we eat, looked at each other like that. I'm looking at you, looking at me, being the best that we could be. We had some great players. We only have, we have, uh, we lost three of, of, of those, the Baby Robin. I go back to Jacksonville every year, except for the past couple of years. Uh, we all got together, we had, we, we break bread together, and we all talked about how we used to be. Never thought I would ever be in the National Football League. Never even imagined wearing a gold jacket. This is something that I was blessed with because God gave me the blessings to be a blessing. He gave me an opportunity for these, <laughs> to develop this. I could not outrun anybody. I was slower than frozen syrup. <laughs> there are guys that, that I played a Sandlot football with in Jacksonville that was so much better than me. But what I did, I tried to persevere and through all of that sinful thought and deeds. Guys want to be cool, they want to hang on the, on the streets and hang out. I want to be better than that. My group of guys that I grew up with, we didn't do that. We played football pretty much year round. The passion we had, we couldn't afford footballs. But down in Jacksonville, they had to, you know, that's, Pup woods. You ever heard of pup woods? That's you know, that's some stuff that they cut up for pine trees and um, it was when you go through the jacket, it was the stinkiest area you ever wanted to smell. <laughs> but they had the biggest pine cones. They were about this big. We were getting them to wrap a sock around them, and we played football with that pine, that pine cone up and down the street, tackle on the grass, touching the street. That's where I learned how to play wide receiver tackle on the grass, a touch in the street. When it would rain, you guys are talking about the Astro Dome, the Super Dome and all of that. We had the first dome stadium in Jacksonville. They built this building, it was gonna be a, a bowling alley. But for some reason they stopped. They had the shell around it, the windows weren't full, when closed in, they had the roof in it, and it was all sand inside. And it was about maybe 80, 80 yards long. Some of the top guys that came out of Jacksonville, except for Brian Dawkins, uh, <laughs> played in there. 
You got, uh, I don't know if you, it's some names I can name, you probably won't remember them. Kenny Burroughs, he was double O yeah. for the Houston Oilers. Yeah. He played in there. Sam yeah. Davis was uh, offensive guard for the Pittsburgh Steelers. He played there. I mean, Derek Gat, I mean, there are so many guys that played there that, you know, I, I can't name them all, but we all grew up in that environment, being able to play together. You know, that, that, that's, that started my journey going to Southern University. Boy, I wish I had more time. I can tell you a whole story, but I'm gonna try to skip some of this stuff. Um, I quarterbacked in high school. I couldn't even make the team in, um, when I first went in my ninth grade year, but I'm, I'm gonna skip over some of that stuff because you know, because it's, it's kind of crazy anyway, but um, <laughs> uh, I couldn't make the team. I got in the band, got out of the band, played basketball, made the basketball team. Could not make the football team until I was in my uh, junior year in, the, in high school. Then I sat on the bench. My senior year, I was a starting quarterback. I threw one touchdown and I ran a broken play in for a touchdown. Now, who's going to go scout somebody like that? A, a quarterback that only threw one touchdown and ran one touchdown. They weren't looking for that type of player. So when scouts would come in, my head coach would say, can he sit in there with you and listen to you or talk, talk to the player that you come to see? He said, yeah. So they would talk. I'm over here. And he, they would turn it back on me. Talk, 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 talk. You know? And then we'd get up and say, yeah, we'll come back for you uh, next year, whatever. So they never came back. They never got letters. The guy that they came back is my, my fullback, um, Blake Geiger. He, he was a heck of a punter and a heck of a fullback. So they came back to get him, and, and were they sending letters to him? So I, I said, well, I'm going to jump on this train too. I got on the train with Blight, and we got into Baton Rouge. They called the names out, and uh, I was standing there on, on the uh, platform with my guys not calling my name. He said, what is your name? I told him my name, Harold Carmichael. Um, he said, your name is not on this list. We cannot leave you here. We're going to take you on campus with us anyway. Took me on campus, same thing for, for um, a dormitory room. That was an assumptive close. <laughs> 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 they, called, they, they called my name. They didn't call my name again to get a dormitory room. So they sent me down to the head coach. The whole head coach remembered me coming in, visiting other guys. They called back, said, give them a room. To make a long story, story short, the end of the, my freshman year, I was freshman of the year. I led every receiver in, at Southern. Um, I didn't know the whole thing in the whole, um, in the swipe conference, <coughs> but I was freshman of the year. Then I, every, for three years, I played against Mel Blunt. You guys, you guys maybe remember Mel Blunt, he played for the Steelers. Three years, this guy kicked my butt. I mean, he, was, he saw him the other night. Six four. Big dude, but defensive back, he's the biggest one I think he's ever played the cornerback. This guy used to tear me <laughs> up in, 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 in college. But to this day, I still say he got me ready for the NFL. I didn't know whether I could play the game until two <laughs> weeks after I got drafted. I was drafted in the seventh round by the Eagles. But that's another story I had to, to tell you about. But I, you know, to make this thing draw longer, but um, drafted by the Eagles. Um, Got a phone call, you know, the draft goes, we went the first day, they went first to sixth round, and then they stopped televising it. I can't stop looking at you, boy, you gotta turn around. But, you know, seventh round draft choice, and um, I said, fine, you know, uh, like I said, I went out to get a couple of beers after I thought, you know, they stopped televising the draft. So I went out and um, got a couple of beers, came back and said, Harold, you got drafted by the Eagles in the seventh round. And, I, you know, and all, all day long, these guys, was, what they do, we in the dormitory, but just before cell phones or whatever, you know, they would take the phone receiver off the pay phone and let it hang. Then they come to your dormitory room and say, your agent just, your agent's on the phone. And he would call, tell some guys that that never played. I mean, they sat on the bench. The guy running the phone. There's nobody on the phone and stuff. They just, they, 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 and I thought this is what the guy was doing to me. But he said, No, Harold, I'm serious. The guy, your your agent called, and he called my agent's name. I said, Okay, because because nobody knew my agent's number, uh, name or anything about it. So I called him back, and the agents, my agent said, uh, Yeah. Um, the Eagles, you got drafted by the Eagles in the seventh round. 
they're going to call you tomorrow. When they call you, you tell them. This. I said, well, wait a minute. I thought you was my agent. You're supposed to tell me this. Tell them this. He said, well, I got number one draft choice. Um, I got a number two draft choice. I got a number five draft. I'm not going to have time for you. I said, oh, my goodness. <laughs> what am I going to do? So they, the Eagles called me. I uh, said, we're going to send you out your contract, sign it, and, and send it back. I did, that's what I did. $13,000 my first year that I made. That's before taxes, guys. Before taxes. That's before trying to get, you know, trying to get a car, to, you know, trying to pay for an apartment and all that. But um, they um, they sent me the contract, as I said, and I, I gave it back. And I got got in the training camp, flew up, up a little up to the training camp. I know I'm going to try to hurry. I was in practice in training camp in Reading. I fell and dislocated that thumb. It's still out of whack. Mm -hmm. I fell on it like that, and that bone there popped out like this here. My rookie year, this is happening to me. And I said, gosh, what am I gonna do now? They sent me into Philadelphia uh, they, they, because they couldn't get it back in, in, in place. Had to go back to, to go to a graduate hospital. They finally got it in place. And the, uh, I had the doctor design it. I said, doctor, you gotta do it this way. I gotta be able to catch the ball. You gotta bend that thumb a little bit. Don't put too much in here. You know, keep making it thin around here. He did that. When I got back, it wasn't a really, it was kind of sore, but not the bad. When I got back to the dormitory, I got a football, and I started hitting that, softening up that cast, softening up that cast. Uh, two weeks later, I was catch, I still had the cast. I was catching the ball like that one hand, with that cast in my hand. This was self-determination. Nothing was going to stop me from playing the game that I love. Um, end of the five Five games left in the season, tore my knee up. Damn Cowboys. <laughs> <laughs> they got the they, they hitman. I was out for the last five Probably games. an illegal hit, wasn't it, Harold? Uh, no, no. <laughs> I was not. I didn't listen to Ben Hawkins because Ben Hawkins said, we were roommates, said, rooms, when you can't go any further, go down, go down. But not me being a knucklehead, I was trying to pattern myself after uh, John Mackey, number 88 for the Baltimore coach. I love this guy, and I love the way he played. He would drag people. I was trying to drag people, and here Cornell Green came in, boom, on my knee. Took me out of the game. Came back, you know, um, after the, I had a cast in my leg from here all the way down. Nowadays, they don't even operate on, on a, a torn um, ligament, medial collateral. They just let you rest for a little bit, and it heals itself pretty much. But back then, it was operating happy. They need to make that money and stuff. And I got this big old scar on my knee. But I worked through that, came back my second year. I lit training camp up. Everybody thought I was going to be limping and all of that, not playing with. I lit training camp because, again, I was not going to let anything stop me from doing what I love to do. Came back in 1973, led the league in the NFL, uh, in the NFL in reception and yardage. Um, just tore it up. Roman Gabriel came in. But one of the things I just, you know, the, that I, I feel and I, I feel proud of, uh, about is being able to be playing with a team. Football is the ultimate team sport. If you one guy make a mistake, that whole play is dead. <clears throat> so we, you know, we concentrated and it came really uh, together when Dick Vermeil came in to uh, coach the Eagles. He brought, he, uh, when he came in, he, he got rid of the whole team except for 12 guys. That was his core that he built around. Those 12 guys, uh, you know, some of those guys they got rid of are still good friends of mine, but those 12, they're still great friends of mine because when they brought people into the Philadelphia Eagles, you say, you do it this way. It's not like the stupid stuff going on right now in, in the NFL where players come in and they, they, they dictate what's going to go on. No, you do what we say do. We had a player that came in. I'm not going to call a name, but he was a barefoot uh, kicker with the Eagles. And, uh, <laughs> and he was like, it was I, 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 I. And we came, he came in. I said, no, it's all of us. So. Um, I, I, you know, I, I see that, that thing of getting ready to get jerked off all you know, off the same <laughs> no, shit. But um, no, it's that team weight, te teamwork that makes a team. Some people are saying it's not, it's, it's, it's no I in team. You know, to me it is. It's I 
got to be the best that I could be. And that's when you put that eye in the team. I didn't want anybody to look at me and say, Harold, you didn't do your job. You know, I've dropped some balls now, you know. You're going to do that when you play in the National Football League. You're going to drop some balls. But the ones that I dropped is simply because I was trying to carry the team by myself, on my shoulders. And I tell guys today, you cannot do that. Do your job. Hey, guys, hey, thank you very much. Have a great holiday. Stay safe and God bless you. Thanks for having me.